here and now. And it, we have uh, all three of us here together this time for this uh, very important time in which we can discuss and analyze what uh, the prospects are for the liberation of the Palestinian nation, liberation of Palestine, the return of the refugees, and the development of an international revolutionary movement in solidarity with the Palestinian struggle, especially in the uh, younger generations of the United States, both Jewish and general. The younger generations are fed up with yep. what the older generations have to offer in terms of uh, society, economy, and uh, politics. You know, the young people are fed up. They're fed up with our generation. Our generation has lost its way, especially the Jewish Israelis, which are totally captured by the Zionist fascist ideology. It's so disappointing. Even though there are demonstrations there for the release of the hostages, you know, but only a small fraction of them are really are sincere about releasing Palestinian hostages, Palestinian prisoners, which now number from the West Bank about 10,000, about 500 recurrent. Before it was 523 who were under administrative detention with a charge. Now, you mean prisoners, Palestinian prisoners. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Under administrative detention, how many are there now? Um, I don't know, but I know it, it should it will be in in thousands. So. Yeah, three, four thousand at least. Uh, other, they're still under uh, so-called uh, um, investigation and interrogation. So it's like there's different laws the Zionist occupation used to keep prisoners locked up without trial in uh, their dungeons. I call them dungeons mm. because they're not even prisons. They just torture uh, chambers and dungeons. Even the word uh, concentration camp doesn't even apply to what the Palestinian uh, prisoners are subjected uh, to in the Zionist dungeons. Yeah, there are about a few thousands. I don't know exact number, but I know the total number that the Zionists had uh, arrested without any charge so far in, in, in on the West Bank, over 9,500 men, women, children, and children. That's since October the 7th, right? Yes. Yeah. And before that, there were five thousand. Yeah, prisoners. since October seventh, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. this is this is uh, this is our abductees. Uh, these are abducted from their homes, from their shops, from the streets, from the schools, uh, from the roads uh, between cities and towns. They've been abducted, just simply abducted by the Zionist uh, security apparatus. Hmm. Uh, but that doesn't include the. Uh... Palestinians who are under detention inside Gaza. That's a whole other story. Oh yeah, no, these are not the are not the, those ones being uh, abducted from Gaza. There's a few thousands. Nobody knows uh, the exact number, and those are being held in separated separate uh, dungeons uh, um, inside the. Uh, Israeli air bases and military bases and so subjected to the most extreme forms of torture by blindfolding them, handcuff them to the back and their, their legs uh, also bound for uh, extended time. Like some of them there for 40 days, 50 days, they're just uh, like this, in this kind of state. It's mm. disgusting. Mm -hmm. mm. Um even before October the 7th, I, I've heard reports of uh, prisoners who, uh, you know, the prisons are so overcrowded there that they put uh, 20 prisoners into like one cell, uh, a cell with, you know, maybe three or four uh, double decker, you know, beds, that kind of a cell. And they put, which would an ordinarily hold about six, six, eight, they put 20 in there before the October. The oh, summer. yeah, that, that's 
that's that's normal practice by the Zionist uh, to do. It's 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 partially because they run out of space, and another part is it's a part of the torture. Yeah. I remember in the seventies when I was a young man, and I was arrested a few times by the Zionists. I remember putting us in a small cell of about a, meet, a meter by two meters hmm. and a meter and a half high, which is like, you know. What? A meter yeah. and a half high? Wow. Yeah. They, were, they had us about five to six people in those uh, cells where we have to use the bathroom in a small bucket inside the cell that was allowed to be emptied once a day and you're allowed to go to the bathroom once a day whether you, you have to or not so basically we used to sleep in in in, in shifts okay mm. and uh, on top of each other that mm. lasted uh, one at one time it lasted 18 days mm. so uh this is this practice is not new it has mm. been at least, at least, since 1976, my first time was arrested. So you're talking about for 48 years, at least. So it's nothing new. They know this is form of torture. But uh, we are, we were, and we still uh, are resilient people. And uh, we make a worse uh, situation uh, go back against the Zionists. We used to sing. We used mm. to talk loud and we used to laugh. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm. Make made the, the prison and jail jailers or the jailers go berserk on us. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, if that was the conditions, you know, uh, indicating that the prisons <clears throat> were filled up before October 7th, where are the 10,000 that are currently arrested in the West Bank? Where are the uh, Palestinians who are being detained in Gaza being held? You know, there's no reports of that whatsoever. You know, what do they have? You know, what kind of, you know, conditions are they being held under? You know, none of this is being reported. Abraham, I, I wonder what's happening to all those, you know. Abraham, nobody's asking. Nobody's asking. Uh -huh. Who is demanding the answers? even from the international community. Let's just start there. Um, United Nations, let's start with Human Rights Watch. Let's start with those bourgeois organizations that have, that mm. have credibility. Who's yeah. asking? Yeah. You ever heard of being asked? Ahmed hasn't heard of being asked. It's not being asked. Mm. No one, no one yeah. asks about the Palestinians. They can kill 200 people to quote rescue four, four, four quote unquote hostages. That's mm. important. You got the four hostages, but people living in squalor inside a prison, no one's asking, brother. That's yeah. that's, that's why you're not hearing it. No yeah. one cares. I mean, I'm gonna say no one cares, but the 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 international community who who can ask the questions isn't asking. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, even even if somebody's asking, okay, who's reporting about those questions? Who's no, reporting no. about about uh, those people who disappeared? There's uh, um, reports uh, uh, coming from Gaza saying that many, many, many Palestinians who've been abducted and uh, subjected to severe punishment uh, lost their lives. And there's a lot of, of uh, they're discovering, well, it's, it's been on the news lately, discovering uh, mass graves of right. people who are bound to their hands to the back. These were prisoners. They were killed, mm. and they've been put on those mass graves. So it's mm. uh, it's 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 uh, it's a very gruesome uh, situation. The Zionists have been doing to the Palestinians, innocent Palestinians, by the way. They have nothing to do mm. with. Uh, Hamas or other resistant groups, even if they were, they were subjected to the most inhumane conditions. The only condition that comes to mind comparable to what the Palestinians are enduring or were enduring is when the, the white man uh, abducted uh, Africans from West Africa 
and bound them in, in the bottom of the ships where they're bound in their legs and their hands. Um, many of them, they did not even make it to shore. They died because mm. of starvation, uh, thirst, uh, beating. So there's this. we have two situations. The, is slave, the slave uh, uh, trade by the white man and the uh, treatment of the Palestinians. This mm. this there's no other there's no other uh, situation other than those two uh, yeah, this two situation the the uh, slave trade and the Palestinian treatment by the Zionists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's certainly precedence to the Holocaust. You know, the Holocaust of the Nazis didn't come out of nowhere. It's the regular practice against, first of all, third world peoples, and then it. It was, you know, transferred into Europe, you know, because just as uh, the Zionists, you know, treatment of the Palestinians is uh, so reactionary and fascist, that's also going to creep into uh, inside the Israeli Jewish society as well. And uh, likely, uh, you know, the talk is of a civil war between the opposition the Jewish opposition and the Zionist fanatics. Even the Jewish opposition there are Zionists. You know, it's pitiful. It's really pathetic. But, uh, you know, even though they're still Zionists, they're still going to end up, you know, killing each other because that's the way Zionists think. And that's the way Zionists play. You know, they don't care about anything, really. You know, they've lost uh, their bearings and they've become... Uh, isolated and uh nothing can hold them back not even you know the only thing that can hold them back is the united states cuts off their supply of ammunition but the united states uh is not interested not in doing that because you know they they want you know the resistance to be crushed that was the whole point of this you know uh and the same thing happened, you know, with the uh, the the Jewish Revolutionary Socialist opposition, the Jewish Bund of the working class, you know, totally destroyed because it was too much of a threat. And so that's how far they're willing to go. They're willing to destroy a people, you know, like Mao said, you know, the revolutionaries, they swim, you know, they, they live by swimming amongst the people. And uh, in order to destroy the uh, opposition, the resistance... The fascists are willing to destroy the people so that the, the resistance has nowhere uh, within which to uh, to grow and to uh, and to mobilize. It's uh, it's like an ultimate battle here, and uh, they're continuing. They're not willing, you know, to uh, even limit the number of uh, mass the the number of Palestinians killed in each given massacre. You know, they're still adding on to the total of number who were killed yesterday. Uh, like yesterday's uh, massacre in Al Nusayrat uh, refugee camp, when they murdered over 220 so far, the number stands at 218 dead women, children, elderly, uh, innocent men, uh, plus uh, 400, uh, over 400 injured, many of them severely, they will not make it because oh. of lack of, of uh, uh, medical, uh, you know, facilities. What's the media, what's the mystery, what's the media said? Israel triumphed by rescuing hmm. four of its sources and not even mentioning, and uh, some of them, they said, ensuing a few, a few ten. Tens of Palestinians were killed ensuing the fight. Uh, so basically, basically the, the, the Western media is part of the the imperialist uh, media, which uh, sees that uh, black and brown people are expendable. They are expendable. They don't count. They are not uh, white, blue-eyed, green-eyed people. Therefore, they're expendable. When they die, they're just only a number for higher cause. A higher cause is to uh, to, to rescue four white uh, settlers. Mm. This is how, this is the bottom line. This is the bottom line. Uh, even uh, Joe Biden yesterday in, in France, he was boasting and he was congratulating the Israelis for this heroic 
and successful operation of rescuing those four hostages. Without mm -hmm. mentioning over 650 Palestinian between that dead and injured. He didn't care. He, mm -hmm. he just just crush it aside. We don't we don't we don't count. Also doesn't even mention the hostages that were killed by the Zionist military. <clears throat> well that's that's another issue. That's another yeah. issue. A whole they, other issue, they, you know. They don't even mention that, you know, because it's not, not even, you know, that they're featuring the uh the uh, white Ashkenazi uh I I Zionists, you know, as uh as you know uh as being you know liberated and all that but when it comes to the hostages that are killed by the zionist military they don't mention it you know so so what is their priority what is their sort of you know like their goal you know is it to liberate hostages no i mean they just killed you know 35 hostages you know since october the 7th you know they don't care about liberating hostages really what is their goal? Their goal is to destroy the resistance. That's, you know, destroy like the, the United States people. still agrees, you know, with Israel on doing so. They intend yep. to destroy Hamas. You know, this is their objective. And if a whole people gets in the way, then they will destroy the whole people. Exactly. Exactly. That's what's happening. Uh, uh, the Zionists and behind them, the American uh, support, actually, the, the operation, or so-called operation, the massacre yesterday, was uh, a joint uh, operation between the Zionist army and the Americans. And the Americans they were boasting, saying that we supplied, we were part and supply the information for the Israelis to uh, go to free those hostages. The Israeli uh, initial attacks with using a civilian trucks as a decoy coming from the American harbor or uh, what they call it uh, uh, that floating harbor yeah. so it was used as a military uh, starting point so it was an American and Israeli operation against the Palestinian people so the, the Zionists who always saying Hamas, Hamas hiding between civilians, they end up using uh, supplies, trucks, food, hiding in them, wearing a civilian clothes into the area where they're supposed to free those, uh, 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 those hostages. Those prisoners Meantime, of war, yeah. Yes, yes, of course. So... Uh, it was an American and Israeli operation, joint operation. And the Americans, they're not shy of saying, actually, they were taking credit. They were so happy that it was them who were who led the Israelis to do that operation. And they have no problem whatsoever about the number of casualties. It, it, mm. it doesn't add. It's, it's just collateral damage. Mm. It's like you... you, you when you attack somebody and you blow up a, a civilian car, it's a collateral damage. So killing a child is a collateral damage. It's not yeah. like this. That's so important. It's it's okay. It's okay. These are prime people. Who cares about them? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Uh, uh, there was one sort of a point uh, that I wanted to uh, uh, finish off the discussion of the comparison, comparing, as Ahmad did, <clears throat> of the slave trade and the uh, treatment of the Palestinian population now. Um, I understand, uh, 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 Steve, that <clears throat> that a large percentage of the uh, Africans who are being transported uh, to uh, North America, to Turtle Island during the slave trade, you know, lost their lives in the passage, that the conditions were so difficult that a significant proportion of the uh, Africans uh, who were captured and sold into slavery uh, <clears throat> died during the transition, you know, to uh, in the passage to North America. And the total number, I saw some estimations, you know, which were astounding. And I was wondering if you had some more precise information about the number of Africans who died uh, as a result of the uh, slave trade itself. 
after, after, uh, uh, before Steve, may, I may say something. I read that for each survivor African enslaved person, a free man who being enslaved, two lost their lives on, mm -hmm. uh, on board, either within in the concentration camps in West Africa or the concentration camps on shore on the Turtle Island. So for each survival, surviving free American, uh, African person who been enslaved, two lost their lives. Sorry, go ahead, Steve. Steve, your your uh, mic is. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking up the. Inf I'm looking. I'm looking the numbers right now for you. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, um, very good, very good. So the the number is outstanding. It's it's disgusting, and mm -hmm. this kind of mentality, Steve. Whenever you're ready, just uh, go in. I th I heard that it was like two three million who uh, who died. Yeah, you know? of course, of course, there were or, actually. There's so many been so many people were killed in Western Africa when they were hunting them. It's like hunting. They're called it hunting. It's like they're hunting a gazelle or or an animal. Mm -hmm. Okay, they kill so many people. They burn so many villages. Mm -hmm. They it, it was it's actually if there was any real real Holocaust, is the Holocaust of the African peoples of Western Africa. Where mm -hmm. tens of millions perished, families destroyed. Uh, it's it's un, un, unfathomable to, to to just to start talking about the the so-called slave trade uh, of the white man, and they didn't care. Mm -hmm. Even now, like the only the only story they are talking about as a, hum a humanitarian story is the Holocaust, which is being urbanized. To, to support the Zionist narratives is not as a human issue, human rights issue. Hmm. That's that's really sad. Yeah. So we have ten minutes. Oh yes. Wow. Is this two million? Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I had expected. Yes. Wow. Oh. It's unreal. It's unreal. Four million. Wow. Since 1500. Whoa. Yeah. If you want to add those uh, four, four million up till if they're still alive, you're talking about tens of millions of right. people. Uh -huh. That's, that's, that's a, that's a real Holocaust, another real Holocaust of a human gun. But who cares? They're blacks. They're not yeah. whites. That's, I mean, black uh, Africans were even put into zoos in Europe. And, yes, and, and yes, up till a, actually, uh, yeah. in the early 20th century, they brought them into Holland and you know, they put them in, in uh, cages so yeah. people could look at them, touch them. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's un, un, unreal. Right. So when I, that, that's why I argue, when everyone talks about the, the Jewish Holocaust, I don't deny it wasn't a tragedy, a, a tragedy of humanity. But I would say this is also the tragedy of humanity, and no one looks, no one, no one pays attention to it. It's, yeah. And also, the rule of the Belgian king in Congo, he killed anybody he wanted to kill. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. he had the conference in the eighteen eighties to cut up Africa. The mm -hmm. man who, so you know, we're talking about really uh, a savage, whole, 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 holy the. Holy the reins of power. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh. yes, for sure. Yes. I, I, I heard the number in the Congo. It's up to between five hundred thousand to one million and a half. The the Congolese uh, uh, Holocaust. Uh, and then there's so, uh, a Namibia, Namibia uh, Holocaust Namibia, as well. Yes. yes. So this is this is imperialism. This, this capitalism in its ugliest form, and this is continue until today in Palestine. There's right. no difference. There's right. no difference to the intention. Go ahead. Right. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I, 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 I was just, I was just waving my hand to show agreement with you. There's no difference. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's no difference between the intention of the white man 
in Congo or Namibia or Western Africa or uh, even dropping the uh, bombs on Hiroshima and Gazagi and, and Palestine. Mm. They're all the same intention. It's a white man greed called capitalism and imperialism. Mm. And Israel represent that uh, forward base of the Western imperialism in the middle of the Arab world. Other than that analysis, it's just a waste of time. Mm. Yeah, it's a very it's it's a more difficult uh, condition than uh, than other struggles. I think that uh, uh, you know, like many demonstrators, you know, they chant, you know, saying that uh, they want to free Palestine uh now or in our lifetime i think it's much more difficult than they perceive because unlike algeria when you had the transplantation of uh, french colonials <clears throat> from the mother country into mm. uh, northern africa taking over all the uh, prominent positions <clears throat> and uh you know providing privileges you know to a certain uh, sectors of the population that would collaborate with the colonial administration, like the French Jewish population there, who turned into administrators on behalf of colonialism, again being used uh, by imperialism. Um, in the case of Palestine, though, the Zionists, they're um, free agents, you know, they're just mercenaries. They're just um, That's right. acting out the role uh, assigned to them by imperialism with the expectation that they would be treated as a uh, privileged, you know, layer of, uh, of imperialism and uh, provided with all the necessary means to do so on behalf of the imperial power. But if, you know, the 7.2 million Jewish Israelis all applied to go and leave <clears throat> Palestine to go to the United States of America. The United States of America is not going to accept them. No, they're just waste. No, they have nowhere to go. That's why they're so resolute in their their fascism there, because they know that they're they're uh, they're being put up against. They're being put into a corner in which they think that they have no other alternative but to fight and kill and murder the Palestinian people as a whole in order to preserve the privileges that they have been provided for. I it's going to be a much exactly... more difficult struggle than, than the French colonials who just left, you know. I don't think I don't think that the colonists in Palestine knew that. I don't think they know that they are not welcome in the West. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think, yeah, I don't think they are. Yeah, you and I, we might we might think that they're not uh, uh, welcomed or they're not very welcome to the West. But uh, the Zionist colonists, uh, I don't call them Israelis. I don't want to give them that uh, privilege. The Zionist colonists, they think they have the whole world under their tips fingertips they could go wherever they want including west the west but as you said they are acting as free agents volunteer to uh, fulfill uh, the uh, western imperialist uh, goal which is basically being uh, manning the western imperialist uh, forward base in the middle east uh, and creating havoc in the area because it's the destabilization of the west M middle east is vital for the West in their hegemony of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is <clears throat> in the United States? That's pretty uh, a crucial uh, arena of struggle. Um, to, what uh, what's the breakdown and, and the generational breakdown in terms of solidarity with the Palestinians? Uh, it seems like the pressure is being put on the Biden administration and they, they, they're they having to make some concessions. And now they they talk about the ceasefire deal that they've been able to broker with Israel. How how far is this uh, being uh, treated as uh, credible in, amongst the Americans? That's a good that's a good question. I can't speak for everybody or I can speak to what I read and what I see. 
And I was thinking about this this morning. I actually was thinking about this question this morning. Now, I am not part of the voting population that believes in America, puts the flag out on the holiday, proudly sings, oh, say, can you see? I'm not part of that crew. I don't know how they think, but I can say this. The youth in the colleges has pushed the, the needle around this issue clearly to the left. The news media, however, the police departments, the universities, the proper, the um, uh, covert influence op operators that's been in the news recently, pro-Israel, have clearly pushed back towards the right. Um, there is a campaign starting among the, among the activists and spreading inside the, the communities of working people that people should not vote for Biden or Trump because they represent the, they represent genocide and mm. they should vote for a third candidate, any third candidate. Mm. And there is pushback against that. So I would say the majority of people in this country that I can say actively have come out in support of Palestine have been a college age, college age youth. It's such a concern that um, there was a um, John Warner, Mister Elizabeth Taylor, who he, he's a senator uh, from Virginia, spoke about this last week on I think on Face the Nation, and he said he, we are concerned that we've lost a whole generation of Americans who will never respect Israel. That's how serious it is. Hmm. Hmm. And he's a He's a major. He's a major, major, the Democratic Party senator. Been in Congress at least twenty years. Former husband of the late, of the late, the late movie star Elizabeth Taylor, and mm -hmm. you know, and he said this. So they're definitely okay. 